You know, the dream really has been all about the fact that one day technology will reach a state where fitness becomes part and parcel of what technology can deliver. And then came that one little thing which we all started wearing, a fitness band, and we all thought, yes, this is the holy grail. This will take us to the level of fitness that has never been done before. They called it body hacking because now everything that you did with your body, everything to do with fitness, every single step you took, every calorie you burnt, every workout that you did, got some kind of a measurement. You were able to hack into your body and know how well you slept, what is your heartbeat, how many steps you took, how many calories you converted, and how many you burnt. And then everybody thought that wearable will make the entire world a very fit place. Did it, or did we bark up the wrong tree? We're about to find out. Now, I have to tell you that it's a very, very interesting interactive session. Right in the middle of the session, also, I will come to all of you. Uh, there's been a big change in terms of the number of people that have come in right now. More people are coming in. So let me make this announcement again. It's very interactive because right through the session, beginning, middle, and end, I will keep coming to you, and especially for the questions right at the end. The best few questions will actually win gadgets and prizes, including GoPros, DJI Osmos, and Fitbits. So let's take a look at what we have for you, the discussion that we'll start. Of course, I'm sure every one of you already knows Mandana, Mandana Karimi, model and actor. Please give her a big hand. She's our first <laughs> panelist that has already joined me. Joining me next again is another superstar in the world of fitness, Luke Cottenhau, author and master coach for Goki. Luke, give him a big hand, please. Great to have you, Luke. Come sit. So, Luke, I'm so happy to see you in a T-shirt. There's a mic there. Come sit. I'm so happy to see you in a T-shirt. In that book that you did with Shilpa Shetty, that, same you're wearing a black shirt, and it's really, really loose and big. Right? So, so I'm glad that this is one of those. I'm now thinking that I should get rid of the suit and get my leggings on and everything else. So Luke is here. Mandana is here, uh, looking very, very fit. And Mandana, of course, we all want to know how one of the fittest people in the country has actually ended up doing that to your leg. So is it fitness and technology that reduced you to this? Um, well, um, I play football. And um, football, it's one of the new sports that I've been playing for the past uh, 11 months. And I'm a very aggressive and um, very strong uh, defender. So getting back to this, uh, when you know, I'm, I'm playing for the Roots Premier League in Bandra, okay. Okay. Uh, the female league for the second season, and um, I got injured while uh, defending, uh, you know, stopping someone. And well, I think I injured <laughs> okay. him. I, I think I think you're being very very it's, subtle when you say defending something. Say, look, aggressive. We all know. All of us have seen you on Big Boss. So that part well, I'm of your personality we already know. But the part I want to know is when you're saying you were defending. Did you kick someone? I mean, that's the same mi mi minimum. I'm, okay, I'm very competitive. And um, so for me, uh, stopping the ball and not letting anyone score, so that's the main thing. Oh, yes, I got injured, but well, that's life. So, okay, but yeah. you did kick someone. Yeah, yes, okay, I so did. So I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to sit in that seat. I'll sit on the other side now that we know that when, when, you, when you're really, really in your mood, you can yeah. kick, right? Yeah, so I, I will I not sit kick. there. I'll yeah. be sitting there. Okay, let's now get in another superstar. She is a coach to all the superstars, literally anyone you can think about in the movie industry comes to her because she is that good. I will let you, I will let her tell you who all are part of her portfolio and personal friends who come to her for coaching. Yasmin Karachiwala, celebrity fitness consultant. Yasmin. Great to have you here, Yasmin. Come, please take a seat. You want to sit next to Mandana? You're automatically going away there, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. Sit, sit, sit. So, Yasmin, obviously most people here already know you, and the others who've just heard about the fact that you're a coach to all the biggest celebrities have already Googled you. So I don't think I need... I literally saw phones come out very, very quickly. So I'll tell you one person that I do know she does... Uh, a lot of coaching with. Uh, it's also a person that she ditched me for. She and I were supposed to be doing a contest together online. 
and we were trying to see, and she said that, listen, I don't want to compete anymore because I'm having lunch with Deepika Padukone. Is that right? No, it was Katrina. Oh, Katrina Kaif. Okay, all right. So listen, I mean, you know, I get confused between women that look like that. So now, yes. if I had to choose between him and Katrina, who would you have chosen? Of course. I mean, come on. Sorry. For you, the answer should be me. Okay. And then, of course, a person who has sparred with me a lot of times on shows before, Dr. Rajat Johan, sports exercise medicine and pain management physician and author. Rajat. <laughs> Welcome. Come. Okay. So, Rajat, you, of course, now represent the part of this panel that usually is the contrarian. We've done the show contrarian before, but you also represent the contrarian part, which is why I'm now really all set to get started. But before we do that, just so that we set stage, literally, let's find out how many people here right now are either wearing or plan to wear anything which is a wearable fitness device. Either wearing one right now, it could be a watch, a smartwatch, or are planning to wear one. Anybody? Just raise your hands. Okay. So keep those hands raised. Don't, don't let those hands go away. Okay. So can I just ask you to just come forward? Yes. You, yeah, yeah. You. And keep those hands raised out there. Okay. And uh, the, the lady in the pink. Yeah, there, right there. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I want the two of you to just come and join us here. We'll do a quick Q&A. No, no, no. Sony, we're not testing your fitness right now by how far you can throw that. Okay. So <laughs> come, come, just join us here. We have a very quick question. I told you I'll keep this very interactive. You, can you, can you, you have a fitness band, you should just kind of jump over. Okay, don't do that. I'm just joking. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Great to have you here. What are you wearing? What fitness band is that? Okay. But you do, you do otherwise, right? Okay. And let's find out from her. Come run. Let's get a few steps on that counter. Oh, you're not wearing it right now. Yeah, I'll come to that part of how many people say that they have a fitness band that they do not wear anymore. Okay. So I'll tell you what, the reason that I have the two of you here is that you two represent exactly the kind of technology and fitness amalgamation that most people talk about. So I'm going to give away the first prize of a fitness band or a Fitbit, because two of you aren't even wearing one, right? To one of you. Whoever does the maximum amount of counts according to my technology, of number of push-ups on stage. <laughs> Come on, it's a fitness and technology talk. I mean, what did you think I'm going to ask you to do out here? You can do squats. Can you, can you, can you pick him up on the squat? No? Okay. So it has to be, has to be push-ups, right? Oh, listen, we can get any and one of them to give you. Look, a quick demo of the perfect push-up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no, Luke is going to give you the perfect demo with me sitting on him, on his back. <laughs> okay, now look at that, right there. Wow, perfect, in every which way. Give, give, give him a big hand, that's the perfect push-up in a, his nose literally is and his neck is not moving at all. All right, let's go. I, I have a feeling five will win it for you. But remember, if your nose doesn't touch, you can take off whatever you like. I have no problem, never ask the question. I, I never ever am the right person to ask, can I take clothes off? I'll always say yes. Yeah, yeah, please. I, I don't know whether you're going to ask me that question. Right? Okay, no. <laughs> All right, here we go. Remember, if the nose touches is when I will actually count it. One. <laughs> And a six. We'll count the six. And a seven. Eleven. Wow. He really wants the band. Yeah, this is, this is. Okay, stop showing off here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Do you want to give it a shot? Of course you can. You can. Okay, you, absolutely. Go for that. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, please. All yours. Come on. Come on. You've Come got on. to win this. Woo. The two. <laughs> okay. No, no, listen. 
both of you win, okay, your prizes will be with you. We just wanted to... No, 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 but the squat killer, now what are you going to lift up? I mean, we could have got you to lift up Mandana, but she's, she's, yeah, no. No, no, we're good. You're, you're, you're a winner, you're a winner. Great to see that you guys use technology. Thank you so much. We'll get your prizes to your table. Okay. Uh, is this... Yeah? Oh, it's yours, okay. Okay, so DJI Osmo is the prize that will be coming to you right away. Okay, let's get started. I set this up. I set this up by asking and setting this entire stage out here of how the holy grail was supposed to be that when we saw technology measuring every movement of ours, the world said, that's it, we don't need anything else. We now can measure exactly what each person does, amount of calories, amount that you won't need to burn, the number of steps, the amount of miles or kilometers you need to walk every day. Let's find out from each of you how much of tech and fitness comes into your personal life. I'll start with you, Um, sh uh, So I started wearing the Fitbit for, um, I think, a couple of months. Um, but it made me so conscious of, uh, you know, counting my steps, what I eat, where I, all that. So I decided to stop wearing it. And um, I don't wear it anymore. And um, I mainly start listening to my body, how I feel. And if I feel I've done enough exercise, then I was good. But then again, getting back to your question about technology, uh, I start training uh, EMS, um, which is helping me a lot. And um, instead of working out for 60 minutes or 45 minutes, um, I do around 28 to 30 minutes of EMS and um, is just giving me the fantastic result, to be honest. And um, the, te the technology part of it, um, I mean, I'm talking about my own experience. It, um, it made me actually be really sore the next day. Um, I'm combining my yoga, Pilates, weight training with EMS. So I think that's one technology at the moment. I've been using it, and I love it um, because um, I think I'm doing it around uh, three times a week. Okay. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So, so technology uh, and fitness in your life actually play a role yeah, and a very yeah, yeah, huge course. role then. Yeah, it's a huge It's, it's actually yeah. giving you results yeah, that you yeah, may not have before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rajat, you're, of course, known as one of the people that uses a lot of technology in fitness, okay, but also is kind of against the whole idea, right? So which is the real Rajat? So I started using polar heart rate monitors way back in 2003, uh, 2004. Uh, used it regularly for a couple of years. But as time went on, I think we all evolve as people. Uh, you don't need a machine or a, you know, like a watch to tell you how your heart rate is doing. Uh, I, can, I used to be able to tell my uh, pace of running uh, 10 seconds difference. So like, hey, am I doing a 4.15 or a 4.30 or 4.45? I could by the feel of it. And there's a very good study that's come out recently saying about breathing is more important rather than looking at the heart rate. So if you can actually con be aware of breathing, it's better than or as good as, you know, one of those heart rate monitors. But a lot of people also say that once you've worn one of these yeah. uh, and, and you're wearing wearable technology that body hacks and tells you numbers, then you become far more aware of the speed that you're running, uh, okay. the amount of steps you've done in a day, your actual heart rate, and even breathing. So would you say that you become better after you wore all of these things? I think it's, it's both ways. Okay. Uh, I think if someone's more body aware, technology will help you more. The point is, is technology right there? Is it there yet? No, not yet. Okay. So all I think right. it's, it's a journey for technology too. Uh, yes, the times, how could I tell my pace and you know, speed and all that was based on the watch that I was looking at all the time. But soon enough, after two, three years of having done that right. constantly, then I could figure. Yeah, I really thought what I was. So it, it, it got you there. Exactly. So it, it's so not it something a, to just get rid of. Both ways. Right totally. Okay. Totally. All right. So, Yasmin, uh, uh, almost the same question for you. Uh, who's more fit, Deepika Padukone or Katrina Kaif? Okay, no, I'm just kidding. I'll come to that <laughs> later. No, no, we will put her on the spot on that one, but not right now. So, Yasmin, personally in your life, tech and fitness, how much of a role does it play? So I think, um, like, I've been wearing the Fitbit for a really long time, and it helps me because uh, when I'm training, and I teach a lot of Pilates, uh, after about an hour, my watch tells me you have 170 steps to take because you've not completed 250. So even though I'm standing all the time, I'm not moving that much. Correct. 
So it's a great reminder to tell me to move. Uh, with my clients, I find it's really motivating for people, and it works both ways, right? Uh, it's motivating for a really sedentary person mm -hmm. to strap it on. Like my mom's 70 years old, and I just gifted her a Fitbit, okay. and her uh, goal is 2,500 steps. But it's really great for her because she moves that much more. So technology is great. It just depends how much of your life you allow it to rule. Okay. You need to know when to use it and when not to. Okay, great. Uh, interesting point. So, Luke, Goki may be one of the more revolutionary things that has happened recently because they just took something which is a wearable and then created an ecosystem around it that I think is uh, no one else in the world has it. Would you say that it's the data and the technology that enables it all or is it the entire ecosystem? What, according to you, is the more important factor here? I think it's the ecosystem because we have enough of wearable technology and people get data. But what do you do with the data once Correct. you have it? Data right. just remains data unless you utilize it the right way. So I think in the ecosystem, you have a coach who can look at your data and, you know, based on your fitness goal, they can guide you. Because it's really not just about getting steps. People get steps, but their hydration levels are still low. Right. They get steps, but they're still roaming around with vitamin deficiencies. So it's not about steps, it's about getting steps in a body which has the right vitamin levels, the right amount of rest and recovery, the right nutrition going in. Mm -hmm. You know, so people use bands and we have data coming in where they say we walk 10,000 steps every day but we don't lose weight. Correct. And then we look at their nutrition and the answer's there. So, you know, you can't separate health in segments. You've got to look at the entire ecosystem of the mind, the body and the data. So technology definitely gives us that data and then we have coaches who make use of that data. Okay. So, so we've established where each of them stand in terms of their own personal fitness and how they use technology. But I want to know, Andhra, from you, uh, you obviously were a person that looked pretty fit, but suddenly you've become extremely into this entire world. Like, you know, it, it, it is brand new. I haven't seen this part of you before. Yeah. What suddenly got you so motivated that you hit fitness at this level? Is there an objective? Is there a purpose? Is there an awakening one day? Something usually happens to trigger it yeah. off to this level. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing many sports since childhood. So I played table tennis, I played volleyball for my school team, and um, I've been working out all my life and swimming. But um, um, for past one year, um, I had a, a really tough time. And um, I think working out and start playing football, it was one thing that kept me really motivated to kind of, you know, pick myself up. And um, uh, I, I never played football before. Okay. And um, I think what really inspired me was uh, when I started working with an NGO. Um, so I was taking care of 20 kids. And running after the kids, I was like, okay, so this is fun, but um, how can I um, get fitter? So the football thing came up, and um, I'm, uh, I am always had a problem with cardio. Okay. I don't like running, okay. and um, I don't like uh, treadmills because I like to run outside, and in Mumbai, unfortunately, there are not many parks, and mm -hmm. you know it's really uh, tough in Bandra to run around. So um, I never could achieve my goals as, like a, as the way I wanted, like the abs and, as you said, being really healthy. So um, I think playing football, it just helped and um, I started loving it and I play five times a week. Wow. Well, not right now. Yes. Not right now, but um, <laughs> now yeah. just once a week, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, interesting why someone, and you said, and, and I hear a lot of people say this, that if it's, it's either you're having the best time in your life or the worst time in your life are usually the triggers for you to want to do something for yourself. Yeah. So you said that. I think for me it was the worst time of my life and um, sports always has helped me. Um, you know, going to a gym, like, uh, there are days that I'm really, really low. And um, I think the place that actually helps me, it's either the swimming pool to swim, or I don't meditate much, uh, unfortunately, but um, it's either going to a gym or uh, going for a swim. So, Different kind I mean, of meditation yeah, only. Yeah, going to so a gym is almost like meditation. Before I come to Rajat, I want to find out how many of you have ever run, let's say, um, one kilometer, I know everybody will raise their hand if I say just that, let me complete the sentence, one kilometer bare feet on the road, not in your house or something, 
Anybody here who's run more than one kilometer bare feet? Anybody? You've actually done that? So you, you run bare feet only? Or you've just done that? You, you've done that, okay. I see one more hand out there. How much have you run? Do you do it regularly? Shout, shout, don't worry about the mic. If you run barefoot, your lungs will be really good so I can hear you. Okay. Go. So how long do you do this on a regular basis? You run barefoot? Okay. You have to switch the mic on. The person who's given him the mic. Always good to switch it on. Okay, it's working now, yes. Three or four days in a week. And the other times you wear, wear shoes? Yes. Okay, all right. That's a little, yeah. So the reason I said that I'll ask this before I come to Rajat is because here's a person who runs marathons, including what, 42 Ks? No, I don't run barefoot, 42 Ks. <laughs> you don't? Okay, because, because I remember that you were the greatest advocate of running bare feet. Has that changed because? No, no, it wasn't that way. So it was about, I think barefoot running is good as far as the training part goes. Uh, running on the tarmac and running on road and all that, no, it's not a great idea. So the right. whole point really is the learning that you get from it is amazing. It's a good part of training. Okay. And that's what we were saying that day. Right. So, so the reason I'm asking this is that sometimes I think we miss the wood for the trees that we think technology is only about wearing something totally. which is a wearable. Totally. There's so much of science and technology that is being used and has been used for years. Whether you talk about steroid use or abuse is by a part of science, at least it taught us not to use it. Right? So there's a lot that is out there. So are we then sometimes just putting too much pressure on one device because technology and fitness could be a huge plethora. So anything else that is we are very excited by? Uh, Mandana told us about one part of technology she uses, which is not something that normal general public uses. Anything else? Uh, see, shoes is very, very interesting what's happening with shoes right now. So the bigger sports brands, I'm sorry, I'm just putting it out like the, the way it is. <laughs> uh, the bigger shoe brands, uh, companies that are there in India, there's a very big shift if you see in their brand ambassadors. They okay. aren't your elite performance specific sports people that they're after. They're looking at people who are big on social media, who are participants, uh, average, below average, could be above average at times. Uh, what, they're trying to, what they're trying to get to is the masses. So when we talk about steps, steps is a great point. But listen, 10,000 steps isn't enough. That's the minimum we talk about. Right. So it's a great idea if I can get, get a grandmother to even walk three, 4,000. But the point is... But uh, you know, Rajat, before you even take it forward, yeah. uh, we've just skipped what may well be one of the biggest myths, and I'll come to tech yes. myths before. A lot of people who are not even wearing a wearable device, for some reason, and they even use their phones, Everybody in the world thinks that 10,000 steps is some magical figure, which I think just came out of nowhere. Somebody just concocted it and said it's great. But it has become one of the greatest facts, according to most people. Can you bust that myth for me? Totally, totally. So see what happens is um, it's the basic that we need to be doing. It's no magic number, really. Uh, when you go to class, you, you are in class one for one year. And then you get to go to class two, even if you scored only 65%. Mm -hmm. When you push it harder, do you get better? So if you stick with 10,000, seriously, after three months, it's not doing any good for you. Okay. Uh, we need to really appreciate that. We have to push the boundaries again and again, mental or physical or combined or emotional or whatever it be. Okay. Uh, that's a very big issue when we stick with numbers like that. And to, to answer to the early, earlier one, I think clothing matters. So as much as I am happy to run in this, but the point is, listen, it's amazing when you're wearing the right shirt, the right shorts. In running, for example, socks matter. Don't, okay. People don't think about the sock, but mm. sock is a very, very important part. Okay. Uh, since I wear glasses, I've been wearing glasses forever. You have to wear the right glasses uh, you know, when you do a particular sport. Uh, Sehwag is a great example. He started wearing glasses, and his game went for a toss, and no one talks about that part. So okay. that is, again, performance enhancement, uh, okay. you know, or, or technology again. Right? And you're talking about glasses here, right. so that's why I bring that up. So it could be just so many okay, things. So there. there's so many other things yes. that actually come in. So Yasmin, uh, the same question that I asked Mandana, obviously there came a time in your life where one day you decided that fitness was an important thing for you, personal objective. Of course the coaching and everything else must have come because a lot of people would have a lot of interest in knowing how did you get started with where you are today. Where did that come from? Was it just you really interested in the whole Pilates and everything else that you do? Or did you start with coaching as an objective? 
It actually happened to me by fluke. Okay. Sometimes I, the best stories come <laughs> yeah. from there. I uh, started when I was a teenager, and I was forced to actually join a gym with so a friend. That's you started just this year? Just about two years back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, a, a friend of mine forced me to join the gym because she wanted to lose weight. She was dating a boy, and I was the laziest person ever. I would not even like get up to get myself a glass of water if I could and ask someone else to do it just because I didn't want to walk up to the table. But uh, she forced me because there was this great deal uh, happening in this new club where two people could join for okay. the price of one and she wanted to pay half. So <laughs> I paid the other half and I went in totally disinterested. I used to eat uh, more than all the boys I knew. So like a plate of, a serving plate of biryani was what I would order for myself. Okay. And then the rest could order whatever they wanted. So yeah, I went into the gym and uh, she went into the weight section, very focused, knew what she wanted. I saw people dancing around, doing an aerobic class. I thought I was a great dancer. Like, you know, the illusion. <laughs> I went into the aerobic class saying, oh, this is totally up my alley, uh, only to discover that I was really bad. Very miscoordinated, uh, uncoordinated. When people were doing knee ups, I was kicking. I injured a couple of people, unlike Manna, who did it on the <laughs> field. It, this was in a class. I was so annoyed with myself that I kept going back to the class to get better and, you know, to feel good about myself. Uh, the instructor was sick one day and asked me to take her class. She called me and she said, can you take my class? And I said, I don't know how to. Okay. She said, just go to the class. The tape, we had cassettes those days, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not two years back. Not two years back, yeah. Back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she said, just play the cassette and, you know, the songs will come on and do what you know. I went into class, I did that, and I realized that I was speaking like her because I, you know, just heard her so many times. I could correct a few people, and after the class, people liked what I did. I was going to America for an exchange program right after that, and the instructor said, why don't you do a fitness training? Oh. Uh, my cocky self again thought, how difficult can it be? I just took a class without knowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the US to do the ACE training and realized I needed to know anatomy. I was an economics student, okay. didn't know a word, hated biology in school. And uh, yeah, it was tough learning, but I came back, started classes uh, just as pastime, you know, earn an extra buck, pocket money. Um, my interest was actually teaching children. So I would teach in a school in the morning and do the trainings in the evening to make some money. And that's how it just grew. I, you know, as I did it, I realized I enjoyed it. Uh, people started asking a lot of questions that I couldn't answer because my knowledge was very limited. So I started learning more about fitness uh, to be able to help them. And that's how I'm here. And I think what gives me the most satisfaction is teaching people the real meaning of what being fit is and how to achieve that rather than doing something what Katrina Kef is doing to look the way she is, you know. You need to know your own body, work with it, work with yourself and get there. Okay, great. And I think a great inspiration as to how somebody can, a lot of people out here would be very interested to know how that happens. Luke, the same question for you also, because I've seen a lot of things change for people. Just like Yasmin said, there was a time when she was so lazy, she wouldn't actually get up for a glass of water. Look where she is today. Again, there must have been a time in your life when you weren't this Luke, right? What is it that inspired you? What is it that one little, was it, was it one incident? Was it a spate of incidents? Were you always like this? How does it come about? Because it's a great inspirational story to hear that people can so dramatically change their lifestyles. I honestly don't have a story. I've always been this way. It just makes me feel good and I like so doing it. I mean, you, you had these muscles when you were two years old? No, when I was two, <laughs> ask my mom about it. Maybe, maybe a little less than now, no. <laughs> no, but I don't really have a story, to be honest. Okay. I don't have a story. It's, you know, we've been brought up in an environment of fitness, spend a lot of time in Goa on the beaches, so, you know, you're without a shirt. It's normal. You just get into that culture uh, of being Actually, fit. I think that would be so, a great inspiration, that if uh, everyone here lived in Goa, 
and had to spend time on beaches <laughs> with no shirt on, I think it would inspire a lot of people to say, look, okay, these things hanging, no, no, I need to do something about it, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so that's one inspiration for sure, yes. Yeah, that's about it. And then I worked in the corporate world in, you know, in London and Dubai for a while. And uh, I always noticed the topmost management, the CEOs, VP level, they have great jobs, they got great positions, but horrible health. I would wonder how some of them even fit in a first class seat on their business trips. <laughs> and I would think, what's the point of growing to that level if you're going to lose your health? And right. they're in and out of hospitals on 10 drugs at the same time. And that's when I got into the line. I figured you can grow academically, you can grow in your ambition, you can build a company, you can build your business. But how can you do it without compromising health? I think that's success. Success is not just having a designation of a CEO or a, you know, a, a VP or something like that. I think success is building a company, keeping your health intact, being able to give back, keeping your relationships in order. For me, I think that's holistic, you know, okay. and that wasn't happening. And I felt that, so was the answer to grow to a CEO position, you need to sacrifice your health. Right. And I said, it's not possible. It has to be both ways. And I, I think that's what got me into this whole line, basically. It's but is it difficult then to take what you truly believe so deeply within and imbibe that in others who may not think it's that important because they say the greatest wall to fitness is self-realization. Till you don't feel it from inside, it's very difficult to get inspired by someone else. So do you believe, do you see that wall a lot of times where people only want to do the bare minimum and not take it holistically like you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely, I mean, and that wall is caused by us taking life for granted. So we think that, okay, I've woken up this morning, let me have a couple of drinks, eat more donuts, have 10 coffees in a day, not work out, I'll wake up again tomorrow, until something happens. And only when tragedy happens for someone, like they get a heart attack or someone's diagnosed with a cancer or a type two diabetes, that's when they wake up and they realize that, hey, all the pills I'm on is only maintaining me. It's yes. not making me better. Mm -hmm. So some people unfortunately need that tragedy to realize, but we're trying to create awareness and tell people that prevention is better than cure. Okay, great. So I'll tell you what, now one quick round and then I'm going to, go to move on to a quick fire round where we have some interesting questions and then questions from the audience. So let's get down to the technology part of it all over again, right? So there's a lot of thought that there is some technology around right now that can make you fit, but a great amount of technology that is yet to come. I'll introduce some of the subjects to you. For instance, they say nanotechnology will make you know, you, you'll just have, you'll ingest all these nano robots into you and everything that is wrong in your body, they'll go and just kind of repair, give you better muscles. So that's the science fiction of it. But there's a lot more that is coming. Anything that really excites you about fitness to do with technology that you either imagine will come or you're already seeing? Um, so can I think about your question? For sure, sure, minutes? absolutely. Rajat, why don't you start? Yeah, so... Okay, so one thing, I mean, even just adding to that first, I think we are expecting, we are outsourcing fitness. So we think we wear that watch, we wear the shoe, and we'll get fit. It doesn't happen. Uh, 70, 80% of shoes that are, sneakers that are sold, um, they're worn by people who are not active. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> globally, that's the thing. Sure. So I think it's proactive involvement that, you know, if you want something out of technology, we'll have to do it. It just okay. won't, that till that net nanotechnology happens, it's not happening for us. Okay. Uh, so that's a very, very important part. But uh, otherwise, what it excites me is being very customized. You know, we keep talking about personalized medicine, how based on your gender, your, you know, your race, your height, your weight, your metabolic rate, and all that stuff, what dosage of penicillin should you be taking? It should be different. How can it be right taking you know, the same for everyone across the Correct. board? Same what should be happening for uh, electrolytes, for example. You know, when you're running, could it be, hey, listen, now the guy needs sodium or a calcium or chlorine, whatever, whatever it be. And right? that, that level, not exactly. just to open a sachet and everyone has the same. Exactly. Can it be like that? Like I can run in the heat of 40 degrees in Delhi. I can do a half marathon without water. But the point is that's me with my background, whatever it be. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean I'm better or worse than anyone. Right. That's, no one looks at it's taken 33 years to get there. Right? Uh, and the way I run or whatever it be. Now, can it be customized like that? Mm -hmm. So nutrition, seriously, the only thing we today agree on uh, in nutrition is that sugar is bad. Other than that, seriously, we have no idea. You know, <laughs> someone saying high car carbs, low carbs, high proteins, high fats, it's all across the board. Uh, I think those things are being, getting answered. The big problem is we as scientists are not yet, yet sure about a lot of things. We're okay. talking about technology. One big thing in um, heart rate monitors is uh, 220 minus age. 
how can 220 minus age be maximum heart rate for you and me uh, just based on age? Can't be right. It depends on what is our baseline fitness level. Correct. So, you know, those things need to be answered in parallel to technology. We just can't bank on technology just taking away. It's not going to happen like that. Okay. All right. Yasmin, anything? So, I feel like technology is great, and I think I said that earlier, but I think you have to be ready for it, and you have to understand it. So even something as simple as a watch, you know, which calculates your... You have to know what are your needs for your own body, what do you need to achieve, how do you need to achieve that. Like a lot of people wear the Fitbit and 10,000 steps being the benchmark. They might be taking a train to work every day and, you know, they get that 10,000 steps, whereas someone who doesn't do that doesn't get it. So it's the quality of the fitness that you put into it. It's the food you eat. Is the food right for you just because someone's publicizing and saying this is great, but does it work for you? Yeah, all the is fat the diets like that keto, non-keto, yeah. and all of this is... Is it food that you've grown up on, that your body knows, it recognizes? You know, there are so many factors to it. So even like right now, Instagram is great, right? Everyone's posting things. But what I post on Instagram that I'm doing might not necessarily be for the public. So for me, individually, I'm very careful about what I post because I post foundation work. So that if anybody out there is following it, their foundation is built. And then you can go anywhere with it. So I think with technology being as great at, as it is, there needs to be knowledge imparted to the person using it. Okay, good points out there. Luke, anything that's exciting you that actually is merging the world of technology and fitness? No, it's exciting what technology has done for many things, but it's also scary how far it's moving. People are getting lost in technology. Like people believe the band on their hand can change their health. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't work that way. You know, we're moving away from the human touch. We're moving away from our natural soul, our harmony. And we're depending on numbers. So people want to know, hey, Shilpa Shetty, what calorie diet is she on? So I'll say she's on a 2,000 calorie diet today, tomorrow she'll be on a 3,000, and day after she'll be on a 1,000. That's because her day keeps changing. Right. But people want that one number so that they can follow the number, thinking the number's gonna get them that waistline that she has. And that's where technology is scary, because the way it's evolving, I think it has to be used in the right way. Like, let's use technology to find a cure for cancer, diabetes, heart attack. Isn't it funny, we're advancing everywhere, but disease is only growing. Because I don't think it's being used to search for a cure. So, you know, we have to be very wary of technology when we come. It's distancing children away from humanity. You know, with the amount of screen time and what they keep seeing, you can see this in the amount of ADHD rising in children. Correct. It's only because of technology. So it's got to be used in such a way that you have overall health. It's not about having a great body. It's about having a sound mind. I can't tell you how many patients walk into my office every day. They have six-pack size zero figures, but depressed. And then you have happy people come, and they're obese, and when they walk through, my mind's already judging, okay, diabetes, cholesterol, and their reports are clean because their mental state is happy, they're just enjoying wow. life. So, you know, technology won't take us on that path. It's moving, away, moving us away from that path of being natural. We're all products of nature, which means we, we operate best within the biological parameters which define us. What I mean by that is when we eat in alignment with nature, when we sleep, when we align the way we sleep with nature, when we align the way we move with nature, not some crazy moves, but movements in alignment with nature, and when we align the way we think with nature, then everything that's a problem can get better. But what can come in between that is technology. And that's rigidity towards numbers and what the screen is showing you and what a blood report is showing you. Those are just yeah. parameters, but it's not the truth. Okay, great. Um, great insight there. Andra? Yeah, um, so, I mean, I'm very excited for the technology which is helping me to um, push myself and uh, do more uh, in kind of the sports that I do. Uh, but then, as he said as well, um, the reason that I'm really fit today, it's because um, I've been taking my body for granted all my life because um, I used to eat all the junk food. I used to have ice cream, sugar, burgers, whenever I want, because um, by nature, I don't put on weight. So for me, putting on muscle, it's more difficult than, you know, right. like losing weight. a hard gainer. Yeah. So, uh, but for past one year, what I've done, um, I start eating right. I do uh, have one day in a week that I cheat. And uh, the reason I don't wear my band anymore and I don't use the apps that I, I used to have in my phone, 
and uh, follow diets and talk to dietitian about, oh, you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't eat that. So I start listening to my body. If I feel like I need that burger in that day, I will have it. I will have the burger, and it just makes me happy because um, I realized that that three, four months which I was spending time and money, I was really depressed because um, I used to go out for lunch or dinners with my friends, and I used to just look at them eating whatever they want, <laughs> and I'm eating this nicely, lovely green salad, and um, it, it makes you upset, you know? It kind of makes you, ooh, okay, I, I want to eat that burger. So I start doing that. I start uh, training more. And um, I start just doing more workouts instead of just watching my so, food so, so like that. So do you think that some people who say, listen, I only work out so that I can eat everything that's are exactly on the right me. path? That's you? Yeah, that's exactly me. <laughs> but, that's... So, so, so let's, get, let's get some more opinion. Is that the right path? <laughs> you basically well, work well, out so that you can eat anything. Not, not eat anything. And um, so I'm from Iran and we eat a <clears> lot of meat. And um, so I think for the past three years, I've been pretty much as good as a vegetarian, and I've never been so happy in life. I okay. mean, I do miss the meat, but like once in a while, I have my biryani with mutton, and it just makes me happy, yeah. so, okay. yeah. So happiness at the end yeah. of it, as you said. Yeah. Okay, yes. now I'll tell you what, let's, let, let's take this now and take it to several notches up. It's time for quick fire, okay? So I'll come to each of you, same question, but you have to answer immediately, okay? Ready? Yep. All right. Most fit, okay, no, no, I'm starting from this side. <laughs> Most fit Bollywood person, female? Um, Katrina Kaif. Okay, most fit Bollywood person, female? Katrina, Katrina, Katrina Kaif, okay, that's two. Pass. Pass? No, 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 there are no passes <laughs> here at all. I, th I, th I thought there's some Bollywood no, no, no. actor I can't actress be on an NDTV show and get into trouble. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit this one. No, 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 this no. one we'll edit, okay? You have to know, this is a personal opinion. They, they will not hate you for it. Shilpa Shetty. Shilpa Shetty, all right. Shilpa. Shilpa yeah. Shetty. So it's, uh, it's two all. So let's do a quick uh, uh, a uh, show of hands for who beats who. No, no, we'll do it. Most, uh, most fit Bollywood person, male. You cannot say Salman Khan. Um, Akshay Kumar. Akshay, Akshay Kumar. Kumar, okay. Uh, Amir Khan, maybe? Amir Khan, okay. Akshay Kumar. Akshay Kumar. Akshay. Akshay. So Akshay wins this one, hands down. Okay. Most unfit Bollywood person. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. According to you, and this is just personally your own fitness part, not to do with any high fights, this thing. Greatest fitness myth. Um. Okay, I'm going to start from Luke and come back to you, yeah. okay? Greatest fitness myth. I know there are many. I know mm. they must be bubbling with so many of those. But what do you think is the greatest one? This is something your own personal discovery. Greatest fitness I, myth. I think the crunches give you a six-pack. <laughs> <laughs> the number of people who you just, how many hearts and crunches broke right now? <laughs> do you realize all of them who were thinking after very, very inspired talk out here, I'll go outside as soon as I get a small break and do a few crunches. You just broke their hearts. But he's absolutely right. Crunches cannot give you a six-pack. Uh, if you weight train, your fat will turn into muscle. Okay, another, yes. A very interesting one for sure, yes. More, more is good. <laughs> more, is more, more of which? Exercising, so there's no recovery. People don't recover enough. Right, exam. correct. The, uh, so this is, again, you're breaking the heart of all that, the big guys I just met who do seven days a week of gym. If right? they don't get up fresh in the morning, that's a problem. So <laughs> there's not enough recovery. Right, yes. so recovery far more important. In fact, that's the building block, right, yeah, yeah. Mandana? Um, if, you, if you do a weight training for 45 minutes, you're allowed to have protein shake and your meal and eggs and boiled eggs. <laughs> yeah, another one yeah. of the uh, connecting the exercise to the food part of it, right? Okay. For you, what's true fitness? A person who can run a marathon or a person who can deadlift 200 kgs? <laughs> or you can go with none of the above? Yeah, none of the above. None so, but, but, but the myth is All supposed... I can add, the person who can run a marathon and, and be happy the, and maintain everything around and the person who can deadlift and not have injury and not take steroids it's it's a mix it's a state of mind at the end of the day okay. what makes you happy 
Okay, true fitness. Which of the A two? person who can jump out of bed in the morning feeling fresh and alive. Okay, great, yeah. And then go run a marathon and do a deadlift. <laughs> Very good. Rajat. Yeah, so I think no, there's no need to be running a marathon to be fit, you know, as much as I tell people to run. Uh, I think, I think yeah, if You someone... just took away all the business of all the people who were saying, hey, when can we visit you, Doc? No, no, actually, I haven't finished. Uh, so 20, 30 minutes of running a day is awesome. It's really well done. If you can do some strength training, say 10 squats, well done, 10 push-ups, well done. Uh, there's no need for 200 pounds or kg of whatever. Right. Uh, yes, happiness, the, you know, the whole rounded thing we, we need to be looking at. Uh, that's very, everyone's missing, this, the technology is missing emotional part. So that emotional part is very, very good because all of us are going down the drain with that, with technology. Okay. I think the, that's a consensus we've reached, that technology may well be the little barrier that comes between true fitness because you've got to be emotionally happy to be really fit. Okay. Between these two, the deadlifter or the marathon runner? Um, who I do, think who I do you like absolutely more? Absolutely, I agree with her because uh, people who can actually wake up in the morning and they feel fresh and... You know, you see the glow on their face and you, you ask them, oh, what's going on? Why are you so happy? They just, like, they, they have this energy going on because it's not because they can lift or they can go to a marathon and, like, run for days or do, like, uh, two hours of uh, yoga or, you know, all those activities. But they are just so, the energy, the positive energy that they have, I think that's most important. Yeah, that really rub off from yeah. everybody else also, right? That you think. Okay. Second last question. What's on your personal fitness bucket list for 2018? So I think it's to improve my yoga, my flexibility. Okay. Is that something that you're not very... Uh, yeah, I think I've gone to yoga just about two years and I think I have a long way to go. So, okay. so yoga is... Yeah. Yasmin? To help as many people as I can to get fitter. But haven't you already been doing that? Uh, more. That it's never enough, right? I mean, so in the gonna, room like drop, this... Are you going to drop your membership uh, rates for people no, so that I'm more people can come in? No, I'm going to put out more stuff on social media, which is easy for people to follow and follow at home and do it without a gym or without equipment and, you know, do it anywhere, anytime. Okay, great. All right, Rajat. Um, so we, <laughs> we're doing something called Squats 333. So Let's the, say that again. Squats, 333. Okay. So the whole idea is doing 333 squats in a day. And, um, in a day? In a day. So the plan is by the end of this month, forget about end, end of the year, uh, to be doing 333 non-stop squats. That's what I'm at right now. Okay, so the next prize will be for somebody who can do 333 squats on stage right now. Keep your hands raised, okay? <laughs> okay, Vanna. On your personal bucket list, once you're done with this one, yeah. What's on your personal bucket list that you must achieve in fitness this year? Um, I think after I'm done with this, uh, definitely playing more football. Um, but the, the goal that I have for... And not breaking this, your leg every time. Yeah, hopefully not. Okay. Yeah. Um, but definitely I'm going to come back stronger. And um, I think it's to make my students and my kids' family realize that how important sport is in their life. Okay. Because um, I, ha I have a lot of issues with the families because, um, you know, they come to me and they say uh, why they have to play football. You know, there is no need how they're going to earn uh, money and, mm -hmm. you know, how they're going to survive. But I feel um, if we promote uh, sports and uh, health, you know, for our children, it would be great. And I think that's, uh, that's my goal and I hope. Okay, I great. So, so, yep. so I think the bucket lists are all excellent. But what I'd like to do now as my last and final question before we take some quick questions from audience is if you can actually distill true fitness knowledge in one sentence as the takeaway for this audience, what would that be? One sentence for them to close this session and say that is something really important as their takeaway. Distill all your fitness knowledge into one sentence. So I think it's a uh, true fitness is a state of uh, physical as well as emotional health, which means there are many people today who are growing just in the physical part. They just want a six pack or a size zero figure. It's about a lean body or a toned body, but we're not developing in the mental So what's the state. first step? So the more I hear about this emotional part of it, 
There must be, in the same way as you can tell people to take the first step into a gym to get perfect fitness or take the first step of going for a run for 20 or 30 years. What's the first step someone can take to actually get that mind-body connection right? I think it's intention and goal because most people don't know why they're working out. One day they want to be like a cricket player, the second day they want to look like a new Bollywood actor. So I think when you have your goal and intention set, you train according to that. Okay. You may not even have to lift weights if your goal is just to be fit. You could just go for a walk and do a little bit of yoga and meditate and you'll be fit. So I think it's first your intention and goal that first comes into but, but place. But will Instagram actually allow that? Because all you see on that is these amazing bodies sculpted by steroids, yeah. and then you want to achieve that, right? So I think the truth is if people who are posting on Instagram post their truth about it. You know, because people look at those pictures and they say, I can be like that. But I mean, the, the events that Shilpa and I do, she tells everyone that what you see on the magazine is airbrushed, and this is the real me. We need more people talking about their true self so people don't get fooled. Like half the guys think that the muscles that they see are real with two hours, two hours of workout in the gym, but right. no one's telling them that they're on steroids, they're on anabolics and you know, all of that stuff. So I think people should use social media to give the truth to people and make, you know, show them their real image and say, hey, this is me. So Anushka no, Shetty, for example, that, isn't that she utopian? says, this is not me. <laughs> this is not my skin. This is what the movies do but for then, me. But then she also should not be letting herself be airbrushed. Yeah. Right? So, business I mean, is their livelihood that... at the end of the day, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I couldn't escape the makeup they put on my face before this. I didn't want to do it, but they still did some touch-up on my face. I mean... Maybe I wanted to look good, is. Luke, on NDTV. <laughs> okay, Jasmine, if you could distill all your knowledge into a single sentence for everyone to take uh, home. Like something what uh, Luke said is, set a goal, figure out what it is that you want to get out of yourself, and if it's a big goal, break it up into small, achievable goals. Because what happens is people say, I want to do this and I want to achieve this. And they think one week, one month, two months is going to get them there. But when you have a goal, it's really, really important to break it up into small goals and reward yourself when you achieve that goal. Because small goals will make you reach your big goal. And that's when success. And like I tell everyone, fitness is not a destination, it's a journey. It has to be a lifestyle. And when you're finding that right thing to do, make sure that you enjoy what you're doing and you really, really have fun doing it. Because if you don't, it will not be a lifestyle. It will be a very short-lived goal. Which means fat diets are completely out. The, I'm going to change myself completely in 29 days or less is of no use, right? <laughs> All right, Rajat. All the knowledge you've accumulated over the years in one sentence. So uh, let go of that ego. So you know, don't worry about who is where kind of a thing. So it's, it's, it's almost contradictory, actually. So the whole idea is get better than whatever you were yesterday or are, are today. Okay? And slightly, baby steps, exactly, borrowing things from there. Uh, get slightly better than whatever you were. So it's like Sergei Bubka, you know, the pole vaulter. He used to increase the world record by this much every time. Right. But listen, he was breaking his own record each time. So point really is if you're not actually improving your old self, you're not changing. And emotional and physical, all have to, that's why I said, I said ego. You let go of the ego, half the issues are gone. You're not worrying about who's getting a big, bigger pay, paycheck. You know, half the issue is that, you know, competing with the other person, how much percentage, how does it matter? No one's counting all that once you're gone because you're going to go very soon anyways. <laughs> all right, great, Mandana. You have the last word on the last sentence everything you've learned about personal fitness or otherwise, one sentence to everybody. Um, I think as, as you mentioned about Instagram and um, you know, the business that we are part of it, um, it can be really scary if um, all the young people, they actually believe in what they see because um, your lifestyle might not be the same. You might not be able to have access to, as I train, MSA, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, you need to stop judging yourself, comparing yourself to others, um, especially, you know, the celebs who are, um, you know, posting pictures and, um, you know, showing all this, the six packs and a big muscle. It, does, it doesn't come that easy. It takes a lot of hard work. And it takes a lot of uh, focus and dedication. And um, I think set a goal. Um, it, it's important to know what you want to achieve. And I think your goal shouldn't be this big guy with a big muscle and a magazine who's been makeup and airbrushed and everything. And um, I think, yeah, that's probably just 
Okay, great. Thank so you. I think I think we've got good uh, distillation here of what everybody thinks. So my last question, which is the add-on, is: so is it true then that everybody who in Bollywood who's got a good body is on steroids? Okay, again, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want that answered. I don't want my <laughs> all my dreams broken. Okay, we're going to go with uh, the first person out here. Sony, will you do the needful? Go, catch. All right. So that's actually a mic. You didn't win the prize. No. Okay. So there is this one question that I had. Is it for anybody particularly? I think it's in, for Yasmin in particular. Uh, I have been working out on and off for the past 13 years, and I'm a lawyer by profession. And I also used to be a competitive powerlifter at one point in time. So my question is, uh, I find it really difficult to, when I wake up in the morning, I find myself low in energy. And I don't have time in the evenings because of conferences and now TV appearances. So I just want to know how is it that I can make sure that I feel, I mean, is there something specific, something that I should have for breakfast? What is it that I should do? Give up on the TV appearances. I tried <laughs> that. It really TV. worked for me. <laughs> no. So when you say you're on and off and in a fitness routine right now, are you off or are you I'm on? Off. Four so, to five days a week. I try to go in the morning, but then my lifts just go down by around 10 to 15 percent in the morning. So maybe Basically, you need to try something different than lifting because obviously lifting is not giving you the energy that you require to get through the day. So for a month, try something which is more relaxing for you, which is energizing. And, you know, the moment you feel better, you'll do better lifts. So okay, the great, main great. point, like Luke said, is your mental health right now. So do something that feeds into it. Okay, great advice out there. Okay, we'll take one question from here. Just throw that to him. Don't keep it with you. Yeah. Right in front. Yeah. All right, here we go. Perfect. Okay, not perfect. Okay. <laughs> if you'd caught it, it would be perfect. But you have to use the mic now. It's That's not nice. a prop, Sorry. yeah. That's actually so, um, one question is, so I'm a dancer myself and I gym regularly as well. So, uh, you know, the uh, thing that I face is gymming has helped me transform my body as to the goal that I want. But when I dance about three to four times a week, you know, uh, I feel a lot fitter. I mean, you know, it's something that, you know, uh, emotionally as... You know, you spoke that gives me that uh, sense of fitness and I feel more energetic even after my class. Whereas gymming, yes, has, you know, uh, transformed my body and achieved my goal in terms of what I want to look. But then, yes, I do feel, I don't feel that fit in terms of, you know, the stress levels or the, you know, uh, emotionally and mentally. So what's a good mix of, you know, uh, Before you get some really good professional advice from them all, can I give you some advice? Yeah. When you're live on TV in a show like this, never ever say that you're a dancer. Yeah. The next thing will be that you'll be asked on stage. <laughs> I think that. Because you know, you may just be just fibbing, yeah? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, 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 we don't know, you may be just lying, yeah? So the minute you've got the answer, I'll close the session with a dance session from you. Because yeah. yeah. we don't know, yeah? That's my we, request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's Mandana's request right now. Before we get to answer, he, he only gets the answer if he's a good dancer. Come. Because we have to see whether the yeah. dancer yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, how good are you? Yeah, let's you just see. Agitating you. Come, come. Yeah. You will have to now. Because we and have then... to see whether the dancing is really relaxing you or <laughs> agitating and you and people around you. Of course, if you want to dance with someone, you can, uh, you know, Mandana may not be able to. Rajat is available. Luke is available. <laughs> so. Choose your partner, Rajat, I have noticed, is a much better dancer than Luke. Yeah, yeah. So, any day, Rajat, but otherwise, of course, in case you want, Yasmin, but, but a solo would really do it for us. I can hold your, I can hold your watch <laughs> if you need help. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, sure. Mandana will never give you a watch back now. Okay. <laughs> sure. So, I don't know if he can do music or we can just do a clap of hands. What kind of dance is this? Oh, there is music. There we go. There we Something go. like sounded like this. There you are. Whoa! Wow! Come on. Give him a really big hand. He deserves the best answer now possible. Yeah? Stay here. We'll give you the answer right now.
Who, who's taking this on? And as a matter of advice, whoever, whoever answers then has to also dance right after. <laughs> no, no, please. We, we are running out of time. Jasmine, are you going to take okay, this up? So your question was that you don't feel, uh, you still feel stressed after doing dance and weight training. Or Lift gym. or gym. Uh, do you stretch? A lot? Even if I'm doing a three-hour class, but after a weight training or a gym workout for one and a half hours, I feel stressed. So, so just to repeat, because a lot of people may not have caught that, he said that while when he dances, he feels very nice after, but after a gym workout, he's usually very stressed out. And you gym because you want to build muscle as well as dance. And do you stretch after your gym session? Not that much as compared to the dance. Can you increase stretching and cut down gym by maybe 15 minutes and? Put that time into stretching and do you breathe when you gym? Is your breathing appropriate? Because a lot of times what happens with people who gym is they don't breathe enough. So you're not oxygenating yourself. So, you're, you know, your lactic acid is just being built up. You're not oxygenating yourself. Are you eating according to your lifestyle of dancing three hours and gymming? Is your food, you know, are you eating enough greens? Are you eating food that gives you energy? You drink a lot of water, you know, there are so many factors to what leads to stress, just, you know, okay. with everything else. Yeah, so, so, so do you also want to build up your muscles because you want to do topless dancing? And <laughs> because the muscles are not there, you're a little stressed right now. Many factors, according to me. Rajat, do you have another? Take a break. Take a break. Probably you're doing too much of something that you're not enjoying as much. You said after dancing, you know, you're cool, yeah. right? Whereas after strength training, uh, you're not enjoying it as much. Yes. Probably, ch probably change the program. Probably doing too much weights. I have a quick one. How many, how many hours of sleep do you get at night? Uh, about seven and a half. Deep sleep, you wake, up, you wake up feeling no, fresh? No, it's a disturbed sleep. Okay, so you know, when you're weight training, you need recovery. Yeah. So if you're not recovering, your body's going to be drained of energy. And the second thing, start adding some meditation. That's one of the best ways to bring down overall stress. What you could do. Or maybe the person who's disturbing your sleep, maybe <laughs> can have a ch chat with her a little bit more about not disturbing your sleep. All right. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Your, your dancing was amazing. Thank you so much. Take a seat. Thank you, Mandana. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Rajat. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Luke. Please give them a big hand. I think this was very reflective on the world of fitness and technology coming together. Thank you so much. As always, fantastic speaking to all of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.